Good morning, Seekers, United and Grown-Ups. It's really good that you can join me today. I hope that everything is going well for you. Today, we're going to be talking about the power of the tongue and how it is important that we say the right things. We're going to be reading from the book of James and that's in the New Testament where James is teaching the church about what's good and what isn't good about what we say. So, you know, I like my visual aids. Here we've got Billy and Susanna to help me with this. So we're thinking about how Billy and Susanna feel when people say things to them. How do you think they would feel if somebody called them bossy? Do you think they'd feel happy, sad? Would you like to be called bossy? What about if we called them boring? Is that something that you would like to be called? Would you like to be called a drama queen? Has that ever been used to describe you? A control freak. Is that something that you would be happy with? What about crybaby? That's quite a put down, isn't it? So these are all things that you might hear. These are things that people might say. But as Christians, we've got the Holy Spirit to help us to make good choices and to think about what we say to people. Obviously, it's not good to tell lies, but you can say the same things in different ways. What could we say instead of bossy? How about saying that somebody has good leadership skills? It's kind of saying a similar thing in a slightly different way. Instead of boring, how about saying somebody is quiet and reserved in nature? Drama queen. That's a put down, but we can actually think that somebody is very expressive in the way that they are. What can we say instead of control freak? What do you think? How about saying that they are well organised? And instead of crybaby, somebody that shows emotion, is actually quite sensitive. So can you see we've said the same kind of things but we've used terms that are much much nicer because we have responsibility for the words that we say over people and if you speak to your grown-ups they can remember words that were said to them when they were younger, things that they haven't liked and things that have stuck with them for a very long time. I've just got a little practical demonstration for you. Here I have an egg and I've written on it something horrible that you may say. And I just want to demonstrate what happens when we say horrible things, when we use harsh words. Okay, it's a bit like this. Ready? Hmm, that's made quite a mess. When you say sorry, it's like starting again. So sorry is like putting the egg back together. So let's see, if I piece all this back together, do you think it will ever be the same again? That's ah, quite hard. So when we use harsh words, we can say sorry, we can be forgiven, but we can't actually take back what we said. There is an effect. It cannot be unsaid, like the egg cannot be put back together. Hello everyone, it's good to see you again today. I'm going to be reading from 
the International Bible, the New International Version that we have in church. And I'm going to read to you from the letter written by James, who was Jesus' brother. And I'm going to read to you from chapter 3, starting at verse 2. And if you've got one of these Bibles handy, or you can just go and get one, it would be good to follow along or just listen. We all make many mistakes. If there were a person who never said anything wrong, he'd be perfect. He would be able to control his whole body too. We put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us. It's the same with ships. A ship is very big and it's pushed by strong winds. But a very small rudder controls that big ship. The man who controls the rudder decides where the ship will go. The ship goes where the man wants. It's the same with the tongue. It is a small part of the body, but it boasts about doing great things. A big forest fire can be started with only a little flame. And the tongue is like a fire. It is a whole world of evil among the parts of our bodies. The tongue spreads its evil through the whole body. It starts a fire that influences all of life. I wondered if you'd like to try an activity. When I did the egg drop demonstration and made that awful mess, I was just thinking, I wonder if your brain boxes out there could make an egg carriage, something suitable to transport the egg, to stop it um, smashing. So I was thinking you can use anything from the recycling, use a yogurt pot, got some J cloth, kitchen towel, Maybe we can make a carriage out of a cardboard box, polystyrene, bubble wrap. I think this would be quite useful and something that we receive in the mail, so it's padded envelope. We could use um, string and uh, polythene bag to make a kind of parachute. We can wrap it in, I've got a sock something that crumples when it lands. You can use sellotape, string, you can use anything that you like. Then you have to do this with grown-ups permission. Grown-ups like you to oversee this activity. If you can put your egg in your egg carriage and then drop it out of an upstairs room window and see if the egg will make that transition and not break. So I want a photo of your egg carriage before, a photo afterwards and uh, let me know if the egg makes it intact. Grown-ups, top tip for you, if you hard boil the egg it won't make so much mess. Well I hope you have a nice time doing that and I'm looking forward to seeing the photos. So just to summarise what we've been talking about today, so the scripture reading in the book of James has told us that the tongue, although very small, it is very powerful, like the bit of a horse, the rudder of the ship, or the small spark that starts the forest fire. God would like us to guard what we say with our mouths because of the consequences. Like the broken egg, once something is said, it cannot be unsaid the egg could not be put back together. But the great thing is, is that God is gracious. He gives us good gifts. We've got the Holy Spirit and we've got all the fruits and the gifts of the Spirit to help us. Kindness, gentleness and self-control. Another good thing is that um, God can help us with painful memories. If people have said things to us that have scarred us and hurt us in any way, we can pray about that. The Holy Spirit is a comforter and a healer. So in response to all that we've heard today, let's pray. 
Lord Jesus, we thank you that you gave us your Holy Spirit. Will you help us to listen to your Holy Spirit when it comes to saying the right things? Will you help us not to say things that are unkind, that could hurt people or upset them, but instead to say things that are good, to say things that will make people feel better about themselves, that will build them up and not knock them down. And Lord, will you help us when people say the wrong thing, when people hurt us by their words which aren't nice, will you help us to forgive them and to put things right? Lord, we thank you that through your Holy Spirit we can say good things. And Lord, we want to choose to use our tongues to give you praise and to give you glory. In Jesus' name, Amen. So thank you for joining me today and I will see you again soon. Bye.